Hello and welcome to Let's Play Dear Esther. I'm Cambrian Man and we're gonna take a look at Dear Esther. It's a mod for Half-Life 2 made by the Chinese Room. Um, it's not really a game. I would call it a piece of interactive fiction except it's not terribly interactive either. It's just something you kind of experience. Um, so before I even play it I'm gonna say go get it and play it. It's free um, if you have Half-Life 2, you can play it. Um, it's totally worth it um, to do it because it's different each time, and I don't want to um, to just walk through this game. But I realize that some people would never ever see it, and some people just don't have Half-Life 2 to play it. So we'll uh, we'll take a look at it. I'm not going to try to talk as much, but. Yeah, commentary mode doesn't matter. Dear Esther, I sometimes feel as if I've given birth to this island. Somewhere between the longitude and latitude, a split opened up, and it beached remotely here. No matter how hard I correlate, it remains a singularity, an alpha point in my life that refuses all hypothesis. I return each time, leaving fresh markers that I hope, in the full glare of my hopelessness, will have blossomed into fresh insight in the interim. Um, as far as the voices go, I can't really turn it up or down. It's how it's mixed, and sometimes it's really difficult to hear. That's just how the game is. That's weird. So, we're on this island, and that's about all we know. Um, I believe that's that's alcohol, like um, you know, regular alcohol you find in in booze. But I'm no chemistrist. Yeah, there's no weapons. Can't run. Can't do anything. Come um, back. Come back. Um, no fighting. I think it's technically possible to die, but, you know. Donnelly reported the legend of the hermit, a holy man who sought solitude in its most pure form. Allegedly, he rode here from the mainland in a boat without a bottom, so all the creatures of the sea could rise at night to converse with him. How disappointed he must have been with their chatter. Perhaps now, when all that haunts the ocean is the rubbish dumped from the tankers, he'd find more peace. They say he threw his arms wide in a valley on the south side and the cliff opened up to provide him shelter. They say he died of fever 116 years later. The shepherds left gifts for him at the mouth of the cave, but Donnelly records they never claimed to have seen him. I have visited the cave and I have left my gifts, but like them, I appear to be an unworthy subject of his solitude. Hmm. So we have Donnelly and the Hermit. I think Donnelly is somebody that the uh, the narrator is reading about. I don't want to explain too much, but it is hard to hear sometimes. And it's easy to miss things. Some sort of line. There was once a talk of a wind farm out here, away from the rage and the intolerance of the masses. The sea, they said, is too rough for the turbines to stand. They clearly never came here to experience the becoming for themselves. Personally, I would have supported it. Turbines would be a fitting contemporary refuge for a hermit. The revolution and the permanence. Is that like the golden ratio or whatever down there? I don't know. I'm not great at math. It's that picture you always see with like the seashells. Donnelly's book had not been taken out from the library since 1974. I decided it would never be missed as I slipped it under my coat and avoided the librarian's gaze on the way out. If the subject matter is obscure, the writer's literary style is even more so. It is not the text of a stable or trustworthy reporter. Perhaps it is fitting that my only companion in these last days should be a stolen book written by a dying man. Library. When someone had died or was dying, so ill they gave up what little hope they could 
sacrifice. They cut parallel lines into the cliff, exposing the white chalk beneath. You could see them from the mainland or the fishing boats, and know to send aid or impose a cordon of protection, and wait a generation until whatever pestilence stalked the cliff paths died along with its hosts. My lines are just for this, to keep any would-be rescuers at bay. The infection is not simply of the flesh. Parallel... If you didn't hear that, um... Parallel lines were important to the people of this island. Um, when somebody was, was dying or ill, they would carve them. And our, our narrator seems to also have some sort of infection. Let's see, we can go up or down, but I think we're going to go down first. This is the one thing this game needs, is running, because some parts... They were God-fearing people, those shepherds. There was no love in the relationship. Donnelly tells me that they had one Bible that was passed around in strict rotation. It was stolen by a visiting monk in 1776, two years before the island was abandoned altogether. In the interim, I wonder, did they assign chapter and verse to the stones and grasses? marking the geography with a superimposed significance that they could actually walk the Bible and inhabit its contradictions. The interactivity of this game is a lot because if you play it one time, you won't really get a lot of what's going on. I mean, you'll Dear get... Esther, I met Paul. Paul. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason or retribution, he still spiralled in panic, thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. Responsibility had made him old. Like us, he'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. Yeah, uh... In multiple playthroughs, you'll hear different things. Some of them things are the same. What is that? I find myself increasingly unable to find that point where the hermit ends and Paul and I begin. We are woven into a sodden blanket, stuffed into the bottom of a boat to stop the leak and hold back the ocean. My neck aches from staring up at the aerial. It mirrors the dull throb in my gut where I'm sure I've begun to form another stone. In my dreams, it forms into a perfect representation of Lot's wife, head over her shoulder, staring along the motorway at the approaching traffic in a vacuum of fatalistic calm. Have you already figured out some of what's going on? I'm not sure what these symbols all mean. Some of them look like neurons, some of them look like other things. I won't spoil anything until it gets pretty obvious. But at this point, you should already have some clue of what, what's happening. But I'll tell you, after playing through this game multiple times, I can only give you certain interpretations. It does have some nice music. He was talking about looking up to see an aerial, so we'll see if we can find that. Could be an antenna for us in Amer Americans. Yeah, aerial antenna. I dreamt I stood in the center of the sun, and the solar radiation caught my heart from the inside. My teeth will curl, and my fingernails fall off into my pockets like a If I could stomach, I'd eat. But all I seem capable of is sort of painful. To the livestock still here, I'm going to turn the I have no idea what he said, I'm sorry, and I, I've never been able to hear that entirely, and it seems important. Okay, 
That's a little slow at this point, but it's some nice music. Loading. Onward. Dear Esther, I have now driven the stretch of the M5 between Exeter and Bristol over 21 times. But although I have all the reports and all the witnesses and have cross-referenced them within a millimetre using my ordnance survey maps, I simply cannot find the location. You'd think there would be marks to serve as some evidence. It's somewhere between the turn-off for Sanford and the welcome brake services. But although I can always see it in my rearview mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. Hmm. Wonder what he's looking for. And there's the, uh, the aerial that he's talking about. Right. I'm trying to get the most direct route to hit as many talking points as I can. does mean going a little bit out of the way for a few of them. I'd begun to wonder if Donnelly's voyage here was as prosaic as it was presented. How disappointed not to have found the bones of the holy man. No wonder he hated the inhabitants so. To him they must have seemed like barnacles mindlessly clinging to a mercy seat. Why cling so hard to the rock? Because it is the only thing that stops us from sliding into the ocean, into oblivion. As far as turning down the music, the music actually seems to to be a sound effect. So if I turn it down, it doesn't doesn't make the voices louder. Don't ask me why that is. I don't know. Up the mountain we need to go. Always heading towards the area. I had kidney stones and you visited me in the hospital. After the operation, when I was still half submerged in anesthetic, your outline and your speech both blurred. Now my stones have grown into an island and made their escape, and you have been rendered opaque by the car of a drunk. Yeah. Rendered opaque by the car of a drunk. But of course, there's more to it than that, right? Which begs the question, what is the island? Who is the hermit? What about Donnelly? I've begun to climb, away from the sea and towards the center. It is a straight line to the summit, where the evening begins to coil around the aerial and squeeze the signals into the early silence. The bothy squats against the mount to avoid the gaze of the aerial. I too will creep under the island like an animal and approach it from the northern shore. 